bottom line technical skills cultural skills communication skills so i think everything is given equal weightage yeah. And, yeah and then that's how the 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 rounds uh, in german german uh, organizations are designed for hiring welcome back everybody to another interview today with one of our fire, former clients shekar a senior data scientist and machine learning engineer from India, who uh, moved to Hamburg, Germany last year. And today, Shika is going to explain us a little bit more about his motivation to come to Germany, about the interview process, especially for data scientists and machine learning engineers. And then in the second part of the interview, he's also telling us more about how to settle in Germany with a family, um, how the new workplaces be, what is different, what is challenging. So I'm really excited to meet you again. Sheka, it's been a while since we have met. Um, hello and welcome. Thank you, Tamo. I'm glad to be here. And uh, uh, many thanks to you and your team for, for making this happen. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to be here. Cool. Thanks a lot, Sheka. Yeah, in your case, it was really easy, to be honest. I mean, um, you have worked, like your work experience is impressive. You worked for so many multinational companies back in India. You have more than, I think, 10 years almost of work experience. Um, so I think you're an absolutely expert in the field of data, data science and machine learning. So first of all, I would be interested, why did you, I mean, you had a settled life in India. Um, yeah. Why did you decide, okay, I want to challenge myself. I want to come move abroad with my family. I mean, you also have kids. I want a kid. So what is your motivation? It's a big step, I think, to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, let me start from beginning. So basically, uh, as you mentioned, I have more than 10 years of experience in the industry. Um, and then like I have actually visited out of India and worked and lived there before. Like I've lived in Singapore for two couple of years and then I've lived in London. Um, um, and then more, majority of my experience was in India. Mm -hmm. um, like from the from beginning, I always uh, had this thing clear in my mind that uh, in long term, I'm I'm gonna you know uh, settle down in um, uh, either America or Europe. Mm -hmm. That that's all, that was for sure. Um, so so it it's not like I have made a transition, a, a change in my decision. It was already always there, but I was just looking out for the right time, and I felt that having a good amount of experience in the industry and uh, the way data science industry was moving forward. I felt it is the right time to be in in Europe or um, or American um, continent right now, because as you see that uh, even in, in Germany right now is going through a huge transition. Yeah, so so uh, from from you know uh, to digitalization specifically, not only in terms of science but digitalization. So I feel uh, uh, now America was also my option, uh, but I had a little reservations towards it because of all the you know visa formalities and the uh, wow. very tough this tough uh, nut to crack um uh, and then europe is definitely uh, my my second best option and within europe if you have to look out for a region then germany nothing can be germany right because uh, it's uh, is economic superpower um, mm -hmm. in europe um and and in addition to that there are huge uh, requirement for technical folks um, uh, including data science scientists. Mm -hmm. So, so as, as I mentioned, right, I always wanted to move outward, uh, uh, away, uh, sorry, uh, immigrate to a, to a European or American uh, continent. Um, and that's, that's the reason I, I made this move. Uh, and I felt, and why now it's because I felt that with this experience and my daughter, uh, which is uh, years old, I think this was the right time for her. She's not neither too small. Mm -hmm. um, um, and neither she is too big at this at this uh, point in. Mm -hmm. So this was a perfect time for her to you know uh, carry Indian I'll say culture with her yeah. as well as integrate in a new society, right? Um, so, so I think uh, that that was one of the reasons I I made a move at this point in time. Awesome. I remember we met when was it in um, October 2021 already. And um, then it took some time for you to finish your profile. I think you were a bit busy with the CV. It took a little bit longer, but then we yeah. started applying beginning of in January 2022. And I think you got an offer six weeks after that. Like, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still remember the timelines. I think I 
I met you in October, as you mentioned. But then in November, I stopped my process because of all the COVID situation. Ah, uh, yeah. That it. Yeah. Then we get got back in February 2022, and yeah. in March I had the offer. Ah, in March. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it was really, really fast, and you also could choose. I, I remember between different offers, so oh. it was quite a good process. So maybe um, tell us what were the steps of you first of all like preparing yourself for the interviews and getting the interviews and what was the interview process like um before you to move here <clears throat> sure 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 so uh for that let me first explain that i mean in data science um there are a couple of different kind of opportunities that people uh, opt for right but for example data engineering then machine learning yeah. uh, uh, scientist and uh, ml ops Right. Yeah. So these are three different on a very generic view. I am part of the middle one wherein I am a data scientist to build uh, models, yeah. statistical models. So, um, and then when you are a data professional, you kind of get opportunities for all the three uh, yeah. kind of, right? So I was getting all kind of roles, opportunities. So first thing was to figure out which one uh, suits my profile yeah. or my aspirations. Mm -hmm. So with that, I got a job offer I guess two companies which converted yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, one was in Berlin and another was in Hamburg uh, in both the companies I felt um, in general the process uh, uh, it was same uh, kind of identical I'll say in terms of uh, what they were looking into the candidates right yeah. so at this point of time let me also uh, you know emphasize on the difference uh, in the hiring process in India mm. and Germany, because I was also involved in doing a lot of hiring in India. Um, so, technical skills are of utmost importance. That there is no doubt about it, right? Mm. The difference that I felt in India and in Germany uh, process is that in India, if they only we only focus on finding out the technical capabilities of a candidate. Yeah. If the candidate is good technically, then all other things uh, kind of take the back seat. Yeah. Uh, but in Germany, I felt technical skills definitely has to be top notch. But other than that, there are few more, uh, you know, skills that you should possess that should also be top notch. And they are also equally weighted yeah. when, when they try to make a decision. Yeah. What are those uh, other things uh, which you guys have actually helped me to understand and prepare as well? Like for example, cultural fit. Yeah. For example, your communication skills. Yeah. Uh, whether you are able to fit not only into the data intelligence team where you are getting hired, but also in other teams, which is part of the organization with whom you will you will have to interact on a day to day basis, right? And that that round uh, is actually between different uh, 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 folks from different teams in the organization. Yeah. And you have to, you have to um, and they have to see whether you culturally fit not only in the team where you're getting hired for, but also as a whole organization. That's also very important. And then th definitely there is an HR round, uh, yeah. which uh, probably your hiring manager will take, but they will ask a lot of uh, uh, situation-based questions, right? I remember I was also rejected in one of the interviews. Uh, wherein they uh, they threw at me some situational questions on how you're gonna deal with certain situations. Yeah, and then I I think I thought I gave the right answer, but it was not fitting their culture, their organization. Yeah. Culture. So so again, bottom line: technical skills, cultural skills, communication skills. So I think everything is given equal weightage. Yeah, and, yeah, and then that's how the 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 rounds. Uh, in German German uh, organizations are designed for hiring. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And um, if you, I don't know if you remember, it's, it's been quite a few months already, but if you look back at the tech part, um, what was it different or what was challenging for you? What was interesting for you when you compared the interviews you had? <clears throat> I'll see. First of all, I feel that if you are good at the, at the technical uh, front that you are applying for, then then things may be challenging but not difficult. Mm. So, so uh, be well. I mean, I I was well prepared. Uh, again, I don't really prepare for the technical interviews in order to crack the interview. I always go with my current technical skills. Mm. That's my way of giving interviews. But everyone have their own. But 
so so if you are good at uh, the fundamentals of your technical skills then you will be able to to answer the first round of technical technical uh, you know uh, hurdle where they basically try to understand your skills uh-huh. they will ask you some questions which is related to the field but uh, but and that's that same in india as well that they will ask the basics about your for for example in data science they will not ask me uh, the glorious uh, algorithms uh, <laughs> they will ask me the basics about statistics about about the uh, machine learning uh, or maybe about data engineering as well yeah so so and the same happened with me as well in the first round a took the uh, not the you know technical round but also to understand the technical skills round and then they had all these uh, basics and to understand that how depth your knowledge is mm-hmm. then in general in most of the organizations i feel there is a uh, take home assignment yeah uh, which is a little different from india i think in here also it happens take home assignments but only a few you know companies do that but most of the companies either have a online uh, coding round mm-hmm. uh, or or maybe very in depth uh, technical round yeah so so here there was in most of the companies i interviewed i got a take home assignment so that actually is i feel is a right we do judge a candidate because even at work i take home a task with me mm. and i say hey, that means i do i'm not coding in front of my i my my reporting manager right i take the module and then i code it right yeah. and that that so i feel that take home assignment is more reflective of your day to day job um, and then you have to solve it and then you have to present it in the next mm. round uh, and during the presentations there will be cross questions and those mm. cross will actually if you have done it you will be able to answer the cross questions right that that's as simple as that uh, so so and that's where your presentation skills communication skills are just right because if as a data scientist think that as a data scientist you have to be a good storyteller now yeah. right so if you are uh, if you are presenting your findings in a right way and then answering the questions to to relate it to the task that you have done yeah. uh, then that that's uh, crack the nut Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. If you if you had to name um, a few of the fundamentals technology wise what data scientists or machine learning engineers they should prepare for the interviews, just a few what 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 you name? That's a really good question. Okay. So, based on my hiring experience and based on my interview experience, uh, I'll say as a data scientist, you should be very comfortable with uh the basics first of all right basics of statistics mm-hmm. which everybody can know i'm not saying that you should be a, become a statistician but you should be aware and very clear about the statistics required on a day to day basis for example probability and 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 uh, probability distributions and all these kind of stuff right mm-hmm. you should be comfortable with it uh fundamentally right mm-hmm. second thing I'll not say that you have to be a great coder. You are not going to de- to uh, to build a product. You don't have to develop a product, mm-hmm. but you have to be very comfortable with coding, mm-hmm. right? People can say Java, Python are a lot of things. I'll say in industry, Python is 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 most required. Yeah. So be comfortable with Python. Okay. Um and um uh again, maths is also very much required. Uh, but I have taken the interview and I have also faced the interview where I personally don't go too depth into the maths behind algorithms. If it you know it, it will be reflected in your answers that you are mm-hmm. giving, right? Yeah. For example, uh, for example, let I'm just giving an abstract example. Let let's say there is a there is an algorithm called K-means algorithm, mm-hmm. right? So if you know the maths behind that algorithm, when when I'll ask you explain me K-means algorithm, mm-hmm. you and you will explain me i'll get to know whether you understand the maths behind it or not right so yeah. be very sure so don't pick deep learning or don't take convolutional neural networks um, um, as your as your to go algorithm in interviews right go for basics go for linear regression logistic regression k means decision trees right go for basics but understand how they work behind the hood mm-hmm. right um, definitely you should be aware of if you have worked on deep learning it's great if you are not worked on it it's fine you can say that you have not worked on it right 
but but be sure on whatever algorithms you're mentioning keep it basic first of all and if you have mentioned that you should know in and out about that algorithm right uh -huh. and and finally i would also say that it's very important if you are coming from a software engineering background i'll say uh, ml ops knowledge is also very much expected mm -hmm. and required in your job yeah when i say ml ops basically it's about how you will take your uh, your model to production uh -huh. should be aware how to build apis you should be aware how to call apis okay. be aware of how to deploy an application right uh, very familiar with linux um, yeah and these are what what i'm saying these are not very glorious skills these are skills which every software engineer work on day to day basis just be yeah. good at yeah so those are the things i would recommend people to be comfortable with awesome i think that is really really helpful and that is what a lot of people oversee um everybody wants to have okay i can do that i have these skills but in the end it's always about the fundamentals um thanks a lot for that chika um well I, i think we already learned a lot um you gave some great insights it's you have to be great in tech and you have to be a good storyteller um to land a data scientist job in uh, germany i think in our second part we talk more about your job like what's the difference what's the job like in germany we will talk about settling in germany and maybe also a little bit about the job market of for data scientists in germany at the moment so what is in demand and so on so stay tuned um for our second part of the interview for now i say thank you chika chika it was really insightful thanks a lot for that it really should help a lot of data scientists who are looking for jobs in germany and if you are also a data scientist machine learning engineer and you're looking for uh, to move to germany to start your career here or to get a job here Get in touch with us. Watch our thirty minutes training video. Book a get to know call with us. We assess your skills, and then if we think we can help you, we move on to a second call, uh, a forty-five minutes video call, where we discuss things in detail. And then we, uh, if we're both on the same page, we start working together. Usually, it takes two to three months for you to get an offer, and then maybe soon we will also be doing an interview like this, like I do with Jake today. But you don't have to. Don't be scared. So see you next time. Bye bye.